at some point in time, it happens to everybody, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. You have more things to plug into your TV than you have inputs for. And this is a story that relates to modern TVs that may have two or three HDMI inputs, or CRTs that you're lucky if you have one component, one composite, one S-video, and RF. What do you do if you have multiple consoles and video devices? You could plug wires in individually every time you want to swap devices, or you could go with little switchers like this. I've had a lot of luck with these Pelican switchers. Um, the quality is really good for the price. You could find these on eBay for around $20. Um, you know, they'll have four to five inputs on it. But if you have more than five, what do you do? For a long time, I daisy chained them together. I would have <laughs> 10 or more consoles hooked up to multiple switches. But what if there was a better option? An option that you could have multiple devices plugged in at the same time going to multiple outputs. You get an Extron Crosspoint because with an Extron Crosspoint, depending on the models, you can get 12 inputs, 8 outputs, sometimes more, sometimes less. But the amazing thing about this is one input can go to multiple outputs or simultaneously yeah. multiple inputs, multiple outputs, all at once with this box. These were originally for broadcast studios, right? Um, in the early 2000s, I worked in broadcasting. I used Extron cross points just like this one a lot. When we were sending video from tape to the talent, to production, to master control, to dubbing, whatever, we would do it all here. And for retro video games or home theater systems, this, in my opinion, is a much more professional and elegant system and I want to share how I'm going to integrate this second Extron Crosspoint into my entertainment system and maybe try to convince you why this might be a wise investment for your entertainment system at home. Now there are a lot of versions of the Extron Crosspoint series switcher and like I said this one will go up to 12 although really this is an 8.4 but this design will go 12, put, 12 inputs 8 outputs uh, but the hardware configuration of this one only goes 8 in 4 out. There are some that will do 24 in 12 out. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of combinations. But typically, they're all rack-mounted. They're all metal, really great construction. You have labels on here. There are switches. It's just a really great-feeling unit to operate. And it's incredibly simple, too. If you wanted input 1 to go to TVs 1 and 3, you just press the buttons, and you hit Enter. If you wanted to check what a signal was going to, you can press one and I say, okay, input one is going to one and three. Maybe I want it to four. Well, four is flashing, so it's not going there yet. I can go hit enter and now it's sending it. So input one is going to outputs one, three, and four. And at the same time, I can take input five and send it to two. So it's really intuitive and it's really, really nice. So Let's flip it over and take a look at the back of the unit. Oh, she's still plugged in. There we go. So on the back of the unit, the first thing you're going to notice is this is all BNC input. That's because this is really made for a broadcast professional environment. You can easily overcome that by using BNC to RCA connectors, and that'll work with everything in your home. Or, hey, maybe you're using BNC already. The second thing you'll notice is these are labeled R, G, B, H, and O. Oh, there would be a V card here, and I actually have it right here. We'll talk about this in a second. So like I said, this is a professional card. This is built already for RGB. So if you're using RGB and you want to keep using that in your setup or have a dedicated switcher for it, you're ready to go. And you have horizontal and vertical sync. The only thing you're missing is audio. And we will talk about this audio connector on the bottom and you'll see why I removed this vertical card. So let's start talking about some normal setups for this, right? So typically you're probably gonna have um, composite video, right? So your old, you know, 
yellow and audio cables here, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna install your BNC to RCA connectors on this, swap those in. And now we're taking, because the first three, the RGB, this is just a straight signal connector. It doesn't care what the signal is. So we'll just plug our audio and video here and we are good to go. It'll just switch it. The horizontal and vertical sync, because these are sync signals, inside here, this is really just a giant XOR gate. So because of that, when you put signals through there, if you put video, it looks really weird. And if you put sound through it, it just sounds weird. Now, if I was a betting man, if you cannibalized two of these, you know, RGB slots, if you cannibalized two of these from another system and swapped them out with your horizontal and vertical, it might actually work. And you'd have audio through here as well for component or S video. So let's go into why did I take this vertical one out? Well, I already have one for composite and this is gonna be my component switcher. So, all right, we'll hook our component up but I still need audio. Now, these audio connectors down here, they use this little terminal here. You can get this from Phoenix Contact. It's just a you know, five terminal screw type. You could make uh, audio connectors for this. If you get the manual, it'll show you the diagram. You just get some RCA female connectors and you can, you can wire it up pretty easy and relatively cheap. You can also find um, PCBs that you can plug in connectors. Or you could do what I did, and you could buy pre-assembled ones already on a terminal. There's your audio. Um, these are a little more pricey, um, probably about eight or 10 bucks. Um, I'll have a link to the eBay seller I bought it off of. Um, but when you think about your time and everything else, this was just more convenient to me. Now, it plugs down here, and this is why I removed this vertical card. Uh, it was just, uh, the clearance wasn't perfect for me. It was putting a little more stress on that board than what I wanted. And realistically, you can operate this with any one of these cards removed. They're just daisy chained in there. And the the ribbon cable that plugs into each card just tells the card what, what connections to make. So it's just not talking to that vertical card. And because it's a one-way communication it's fine. It doesn't matter. So I'll populate all of this with my audio cables and we'll be good to go. And you could do the same thing for S video as well. So you can do uh, an S video to RCA. So you could separate your chroma and luma and have your audio down there and you're good to go. It's all self-contained. It just works. Um, I just like this a lot better than Pelican switchers because of the expandability and having a lot of inputs and outputs all at once. So we're going to get this hooked up. Before I do, I want to share one other thing that I do with these switchers. And if you can, I would suggest you do it as well. Like anything, whether it's RAM or, you know, hard drive space, buy more than what you need. So, you know, if you need five inputs, maybe buy eight right? Or, you know, three outputs by four, buy whatever you can get. But the last output, save those. So on my currently installed switcher, my, I have an input and an output, and I just run cables under the rack. It's all in a rack. That way, at any point in time for testing, I can plug a TV into it. I can plug a game console into it and I can route it to everything I need. So I have these wired up already and I just run the RCA cables under the rack so I can plug it in and out for testing. If you can make that work, I highly, highly recommend it. And I'm sure as you're watching this, you're really thinking about all the ways that you can work this into your system. You know, it's great for, for multiple televisions, for multiple game systems, even if you're a streamer. You know, it's nice to be able to stream so you could stream to Twitch or YouTube, but at the same time, still use the TV that you normally watch. So let's uh, start get this guy plugged in and uh, check out its operation. And there we have it. I wasn't going to bore you with hooking all the connections up. You know what it's like to hook things up. But these are my two cross points. I have a 
just a five switcher S video switcher up top, but I have component and composite down here. So that way everything's at my fingertips from the GameCube to the Wii, Xbox, PS2, even down to, you know, PlayStation, Dreamcast, S, NES, NES, everything. It's all right here and it's incredibly easy to use. I really love these things and if you have the room for a rack mount or even if you can just slide this in your entertainment center or cabinet somewhere, highly, highly recommend getting an Extron. All right, and here it is. Everything is running together. So this is my primary viewing experience in my office. I have a really nice old Panasonic over there. Obviously, that's that's only RF and composite, but well, really, it's only RF. I have a composite to RF switch on there. But then I have my Sony KV27FS120. I, I really like this TV. Uh, I think if you're looking for CRTs, the, the 27 inches, big, it's not too big, it's just big enough. But what I like about this, it has component, composite, S-video, and of course RF on it. So really it's everything you might ever need. So we have S-video going through here, so that's through the, uh, just a Pelican S-video switch. Uh, nothing on video 2 because that's the uh, front inputs. Then uh, video 3 is our uh, composite. So I have uh, Roku over there, but I also, on the same Extron composite switcher, I have the Dreamcast over there pumping out Crazy Taxi. And if we go to four, that is our component through the GameCube with the uh, OEM GameCube component cables to the Extron to the TV. I can also pull out the cables I have on the bottom if I want to add extra inputs into it if I want to test something out or I could pull out my uh, my output if I needed to capture some video uh, for a stream or even for something like this so uh, it's just a, it's a really slick setup and um, like I said before I, I really recommend this if you have the room if you can get your hands on one cheap pick it up uh, prices are going a little crazy like net right now on eBay Maybe it's because of the holidays, but keep an eye out. I bought both of those switchers for around $40 a piece with shipping. They were at my house for $60 to $70. So I think that's going to wrap this up. If you like what we're doing here at Retro Tech or Die, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll catch you next time.